everyone to the open day event for the School of Computer Science. And in particular, we're focusing on the undergraduate degree here, GY350. We've got an excellent panel organized today. We've got the program director of the course, uh, Dr. Des Chambers, who's going to kick off this session by giving an excellent presentation and overview of the course. So I'm going to hand over to Des, and Des is going to give this talk. And then afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A session with students of the course and other lecturers of the course. Okay, so hello you, everyone. Des. Thank uh, you. Thanks very much, Enda, for the, the great introduction. And hello, everybody. So I'm Des Chambers. I'm the program director of GY350 here at NUI Galway. And I'm going to talk about computer science at NUI Galway, and particularly our degree program, our undergraduate degree program in computer science and IT, which is GY350. So if we look at computer science at NUIG, um, we'll just take a little brief time to look at the history of the college first, in case you're not aware of this. Uh, the university itself is, is quite old. It was founded in the middle of the 19th century, and it's older than the state itself, and it was originally called Queen's College Galway. So there's some memorabilia still to be found around the campus if you look hard enough. And the quadrangle, the old part of the university is in the picture here, was the original campus, basically. That was the original university building, and it's still in active use by the university itself. So that's the kind of iconic image of, of NUIG that we're, that we're familiar with. But a lot of the activity now on campus takes place in the newer buildings, including the one that, that I work in. Uh, but it has changed a lot over the years and the campus has moved kind of steadily, steadily northwards and across, uh, across the river basically and up, up, up along that, that direction. So some statistics on the university itself. NUIG is a highly ranked university. It's in the top 1% of universities worldwide. So of course the university has developed enormously in the past 170 plus years that, that has been in existence. And NUI Galway is now a world recognized university. So some good statistics here. Um, our graduates do, are highly regarded. They do very well. Our research output has increased year on year. And some of our researchers in certain areas are, are world class at the, at the you know, they would be highly respected and have great reputations at, at a world level. Lots of new stuff has happened on campus. In fact, over the last number of years since I've worked here, I've seen the construction of about between 12 and 16 new buildings have opened here since 2005. And these provide great facilities and have tra transformed the campus and given students and staff access to some fantastic new facilities across a range of faculties. So everything from a new engineering building to new biomedical um, research buildings to, uh, you know, basically across different sectors and business school and so on. So my area of speciality is computer science and IT. So I've talked a bit about the university. Let me tell you a little bit now about GY350 itself. So who needs uh, computer science? So we'll talk a bit about that. So everybody needs computers nowadays, but only some people like, like ourselves, and if you, if you choose to do this course like you, will get to create the next generation of computing systems and applications, the exciting stuff. So somebody has to write the operating system. Somebody in the end has to code up and think up and you know deploy all these fantastic applications that we run on all our devices now everything from our laptops to our phones so if you come here with your ideas and enthusiasm our job is to give you the skills that you need to participate in this exciting future that we're, that we're creating with with technology so some of the areas where things have changed and where there's a big impact being made by computer applications and computer science technology or you know technologies derived from com computer science so you know some of this stuff i mean if, if we look around us in our, in our environment we now have smart doorbells you know things we wouldn't have dreamt up smart heating systems voice activated assistance um, i'm nearly i have to watch now what i say in my kitchen if i say if, you know the kind of wake up names for smart speakers and this is all thanks to computer science uh, you know fundamentally it was smart computer applications and, and very fast network technologies, things like Wi-Fi and high-speed internet that have made all this possible. But also at the back end, cloud computing is, is really important because that's where a lot of the processing is done that makes this stuff work. Home entertainment is also increasingly dependent on internet connected devices like smart TVs. We can hardly imagine a past where we, we, we had one or two TV channels. I mean, the, 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 the array of possibilities for entertainment and automation are almost endless. 
We also should mention that since March of last year, March 2020, there's been a huge surge in people working and studying from home. Um, it's, it was of necessity, obviously, given, given what happened. And this was really possible because of advances in networking, communications, cloud computing, and the other types of technologies that you'd study in a course like GY350. Companies like Zoom, this call, for example, we're doing it on a, this being recorded using Zoom software. They needed to increase their computer capacity by a factor of 10 overnight in the spring of 2020. And they were able to do that easily because of how cloud computing works, for example. And using computers and data centers that, that they didn't even own themselves, you know, many, most of the computers used for Zoom, in fact, are living on infrastructure that's run by Amazon Web Services and co other companies like Microsoft. So it's, it's quite phenomenal what has happened with this stuff. Smart energy is another thing that's going to have a big presence over the next few years. So it'll be an important element in tackling the climate crisis. So there's a whole raft of technologies, there's a whole you know, raft of new applications and things that run on your phone and things that run on servers that make this stuff a lot better and smarter. And software is fundamental to managing energy systems and maximizing their efficiency. So when you look at stuff like this, when you look at all these different pieces of equipment, everything from battery storage technologies to you know, the inverters that are used to convert voltage levels in your home, they're all monitored by and controlled by and re totally reliant on software that's written by software engineers to make it work. We now have very smart apps. In fact, I have one on my phone <clears throat> for both my car and my charging station at home. I actually, I'm lucky enough to drive an EV. So I've, I've two apps really around that on the phone. One is for the car itself and the other one is for the actual charger. Both are smart and connected. You know, and they, you've instant control in these things. You can schedule charging. You can look at your energy usage. You can, you know, basically tell the car to unlock itself if, if you want to remotely. Other areas of, you know, quite significant areas te technologically are things like AI and machine learning. So what's AI and machine learning about? Well, these, <clears throat> these areas, artificial intelligence, machine learning, they're, they're transforming how we use computers. And they're, they're actually sit behind many important application areas. So they've applications in things like image recognition, natural language processing, autonomous vehicles, finance, online shopping, and medicine. AI is heavily used in things like recommender systems. So when you go on Facebook or when you go on to you know, websites to buy stuff, this technology in the background that will recommend products or movies or suggest new contacts for you are those that scan our emails and our social media to advertise to us. So, you know, when you use Gmail, that, that, that's the price you pay for free email is that software in the background, you know, when you've signed up to this, because you're getting it for free, they may use some of your data in an anonymous way to help pay, pay for the system itself. So <clears throat> important areas, you know, to watch over the next few years. Again, I mentioned image processing, but we know of systems where you have a camera built into a doorbell at your front door and it can actually recognize who's walking up the driveway in real time. You know, and within a second or two, you'll get a notification on your phone that Enda or whoever is at the front door. So this type, type of technology is only going to get more common and faster and, and more accurate. So in a course like GY350, you will study AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning in your degree. And we also have some brilliant researchers working in exciting and ethical new applications in these areas across domains of science, engineering and medicine. So I mentioned medicine there, the medical industry itself. Well, the most important people in medicine, of course, are the doctors and nurses. But uh, computer science is an essential part of, of this ecosystem as well, from GP records to the ICU itself. You know, everything from the chart at the end of your bed, the old idea of a paper chart at the end of a hospital bed, that's is or will be soon completely automated in terms of uh, data collection and analysis. And it does help reduce errors. <clears throat> this is a photo, what you're looking at here is a modern surgical procedure. The surgeon needs to operate in a very small region of, of the heart in this case. And he or she is viewing it in, a th in 3D using virtual reality telepresence software that makes it appear larger. And their human scale movements then are translated robotically into much smaller movements. And all of this is possible because of recent advances in things like virtual reality, robotics, image processing and real-time networking. Again, these are all key areas where 
software engineers actually work and make big contributions. So this is a slide I like to present as well. It's um, about the best jobs out there. So there are different companies that do surveys and uh, you, you know look at what the good, what type of careers pay well and have good employment prospects and you know where there's good working conditions. So of course, I believe that being a software developer is a great job, but you don't have to believe me. Every year, companies like Glassdoor do surveys like this. So Glassdoor is a website where current and former employees can anonymously review companies. So, you know, they have a lot of insight and intelligence on the quality and number of positions available. And this year, once again, graduates with computer science rank very highly. In fact, eight out of the top 10 jobs of 2021 listed on Glassdoor would typically be filled or certainly open to graduates with computer science degrees. Other recent surveys point out that this 25% employment growth projected for software developers over the next number of years, short term, you know, over the next five to 10 years. How's the pay? Well, the pay scale is very good. Typically starting salaries 35 to 40,000, depending on, you know, the type of company you're working for, but the pay, pay scales are, are excellent. And experience is not, you know, the only thing that affects pay in this. People generally, don't have that many years experience, but yet they're on very good pay rates, you know. And again, there's a kind of, depending on the companies, you do tend to get paid more in Dublin where maybe the costs are more expensive. But overall, there's excellent potential with it, you know, to work as a software engineer. And the other thing is they're employed by virtually every industry sector. So there's, there's huge demand. So a little bit about, uh, so I've spoken now about computer science a bit about, let's look at the degree program itself in a bit more detail. So first of all, the School of Computer Science itself. So it's this building here. This is the building I work in. So we've, at this point in time, 28 academic staff, a number of support staff and research staff. And there's about 400 undergraduate students in the School of Computer Science and about 180 postgrad students between taught postgraduate, across taught postgraduate programs and a further 80, in fact, research postgraduate students. So the school mostly is centered on this building, which you might recognize if you drive over the Quincentennial Bridge and look into the left. It's one of those buildings at the back of the university there that kind of faces on, onto the river. Computer science at NUIG is, is, is highly ranked as well. So we're, we're a highly ranked university, but they also do subject rankings. So QS rankings from a couple of years ago from computer science subject put computer science in, in Galway at that time as second in Ireland, so right, ranked right between UCD and TCD. So the computer science degree itself, so a couple of things on it. This is, it's a four-year degree program. It's a core computer science and software engineering degree. There's a strong and broad base of computing skills with this. It's, uh, it would be similar to degrees in other universities like TCD and UCD, sometimes we get asked that. So it's quite similar in structure. There is a stream there for extra maths from years one to four. Some students come in with a very high level of maths. It's not a requirement, but if, if that's what you want to do, we have additional optional maths modules if people want to take them. It's a highly respected professional degree. And in fact, it's only one of two in Ireland that's accredited by Engineers Ireland as a software engineering degree course. The other one is in Trinity College Dublin. A lot of the course uses problem-based learning. And these are just some of the kind of application domain areas here that, that you may work on. So the structure of the program in a bit more detail, this slide is a little bit busier and it is included in fact in the brochure. So you, you, know, you can look at this again in your own time if you look at the brochure for the program, but you can see the structure on this. So in the, in the early years, we do more foundational type subjects, but throughout the program, there's a big emphasis on areas like programming, and software engineering, and then some of the core technologies like databases, data management, and networking. And then later years of the course, then you get to do a placement in third year. There's an eight month, a full eight months of a, of a placement period in third year from January to August. And then in fourth year, there's some more advanced courses in areas like AI and machine learning and you know, distributed computing, real-time systems, and amongst other areas. There's actually a, a big array of, of um, optional subjects available in fourth year. So graduates from GY350, they work across all kinds of areas, everything from product development across some of the areas I mentioned, data science and analytics, AI, you know, everything from internet technologies right through to digital media and development. 
Some people end up working in games development. Some people end up working in financial services. Some people end up consulting. And in fact, some become entrepreneurs themselves. There's just a montage of, of logos here of some of the companies, but it's, it's safe to say that computer science graduates work in virtually every industry domain. These will be some of the bigger technology companies that people might be familiar with. But, you know, I sometimes say that, you know, you'll find computer science graduates in surprisingly large numbers working on, in everyone, you know, everywhere from paddypower.com to Microsoft, because everybody has an online presence. Everyone has IT systems. All businesses require people with this skill set. So GY350 is for you if you have an interest in problem solving, creating new things in research. If you have an interest in technology, if you have an interest in, in computers, um, a reasonable standard of maths, a good standard is, is good, but we, we'll talk about the entry requirements in a bit. Physics or other numerous subject, and a good, a good pass or, or better in those is, is good. So these are the specific entry requirements. Um, you don't actually have to have um, a science subject at this point. So the specific entry requirements are to, the usual entry requirements of the university, English, Irish, unless you're exempted, and mathematics at a certain level, and another three subjects. We do not any longer require you to have a lab science subject as, as an entry requirement. The only special requirement is that you have a minimum grade of H6 and honours maths or O2 and ordinary level maths at leaving search or equivalent or sufficient marks in a special maths entry exam if you didn't achieve that at the leaving cert level itself. So other options for computer science at NUI Galway. So I'm gonna mention these very briefly. We also provide an, an option which, which is called IT. It's the information technology subject stream in the BA, undenominated BA degree. And there is also an option in the, in the BSc undenominated to study some computer science. So this is the BA. Uh, structure here. So this is the undenominated BA and uh, in that you can take IT, it's called, rather than computer science, as a subject in first year. So it's taken as one of three subjects in first year and then it's taken as one of two major subjects for second and third year. So there's also an option to take some computer science modules as part of the BSc undenominated, which is GY301. In that case, in first and second year, you would take computer science subjects as one quarter, which is 15 credits. So in other words, 25% of first year and second year can be taken as computer science subjects. And you also have computer science subject options then in third and fourth year. So that is an option as well. If you don't want to do just, just core computer science as, as, your, as, your, as all your subjects essentially. Okay, so that's basically it. I, I'm just uh, gonna pass it back to Enda. Thanks for your attention and um, We'll, we'll basically uh, go back to Enda and uh, take some questions, go on to the panel session. Thank you very much, Des. Really appreciate that and a really excellent presentation. So next up, we have a panel discussion session. We've got a great panel put together here today, uh, including myself, um, but we have Des, we have Karen Young, we have Aparna Pandey, and we've Robert Walsh. So we've got a nice balance, a mix between the lecturing staff and the students. Okay, so this is gonna be a, a really good and, and uh, engaging discussion, I hope. What Des didn't mention is that we're a really happy bunch here. Um, if you decide to come and join us, you'll have a great fun. Um, we try to, I suppose, bring that into our teaching. Uh, we have nice group projects in second year where we do a lot of collaborative peer learning. So it's a, uh, we, we, we generally pride ourselves in having a nice kind of open door policy and I suppose being expressive and allowing everyone to express their ideas. So we're going to start off with, um, I suppose, I can, I can come to you first, Karen, if you want. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about projects. Now, final year project is, is a huge part of most undergraduate degrees. Um, but it, it, for us in particular, it's particularly important because you get the choice, I suppose, to choose your own project, but you also get a, you know, you also get a list of projects from academic staff, so you can choose from those. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, Karen, or have you anything you'd like to kind of bring up on that space? I think it's a really big part of the program. It is. Thank you, Enda. Um, and uh, I suppose specifically with regard to the project, it is the culmination of all of the studies from the preceding years as well as, and I think the students will be able to speak about this as they are just concluding that part of their studies, 
Um, but it's very much also an opportunity to inform your choice of project by your own interests and also whatever you've been exposed to or that you've been working on in your placements. So it's a real opportunity to combine the academic and the industrial experience. And it is very often the, the key element that employers will talk to you about at interview as well. So, yeah, um, yeah that, that that's was a really important point, comment. I think. Yeah, yeah really yeah. important point, Cara. Like Aparna, for instance, what, what is your project this year? What are you working on? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so my project is comparing procedural level generation in video games, which is so much fun. Okay. So I would have never thought that I would have picked something like this because games programming is probably just covered as a module in year two and three, but it caught my eye. And then it also incorporated a little bit of machine learning and AI, which I learned later on in fourth year. So it made everything so much more interesting. And now here I am doing games. So a lot of fun. And what does your does your game do? Can you get to shoot people in it or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. OK, that's that's important, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, tell me this, Robert, what are you doing? Thanks, Enda. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm developing a mobile application for iOS um, that is a community-based application. Um, it lets users report road hazards. Um, so, you know, if you've had a, a flood or there's an accident or whatever, you can find out where it is and you can adjust your route uh, accordingly. Um, so I'm having a great time developing that. I'm lucky to have Des as uh, my supervisor. So he's been very, very helpful in that too. Yeah. That's a good answer, yeah. Keep watering him <laughs> up, yeah. It's going to be close to grading. And tell me this: what technology are you using for that? Is that does that work on both Android or iOS? Yeah, so I focus on iOS, so it's uh, using the Swift programming language uh, and Xcode. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, other technologies used. Um, so I'm building it with AWS cloud computing, um, React for web development. So there's a nice mixture of uh, multiple different technologies in there. It's really. Do you fun think you could release this? Make a fortune. <laughs> That's the plan. Give us all our 10% cut. <laughs> Entrepreneurship awaits. Okay, yeah. All right. You, you were about to jump in there, Des. I think I... No, I, I, I was saying a it. good example of a, of a full stack project. You know, there's, uh, cl there's cloud computing server resources. There's also a phone app. And there's, in fact, a, if, if I write Robert, you have a, a web page as well. You have a web interface to it. So. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's been a great experience, you know learning all the different tools, applying what we learned over the years um, to develop it out. Um, in terms of leave insert subjects, guys, so I'm gonna keep the focus on the students for the moment. So Aparna, why did you decide to choose GY350? What attracted it to you in the first place or what subjects were you good at in school and thought, this is for me, I want to be a computer scientist? So I'm an international student, so I didn't really have leaving certs, but I can explain it in my terms. So, so yeah. the last two years for my school were quite important. And the main subjects I did were physics, chemistry, maths, and computer science as my optional. So I already had a little bit of idea of what computer science is like. And since then I was quite like in love with it and so excited to learn more about it. So definitely. And yeah. I love maths as well. So this was a perfect mix because it had a lot of maths in it as well, a math stream and computer science in it. So and did you like you had some experience with programming? You you yeah. had probably built something in the past. Yeah. Had you had you what had you built? Had you built a oh, web page or no, it was wasn't anything big. They were we actually started with C, which was quite a bump, but yeah, so we learned a little bit of like just coding simple examples. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nice when you when you get to figure it out, isn't it? I know it can be challenging, but then when you finally figure it out, it's a great yeah. feeling, it's great satisfaction. So it's almost addictive. You know? <laughs> okay, and Robert, what about you? What attracted you? You probably went through the Leaving Cert, I assume. So what's up? Yeah, I did the Leaving Cert um, back in 2017. Uh, I guess, you know, growing up and in secondary school, I always kind of had an interest in math subjects, technology and, and how things worked and... And, you know, computer science and UI Galway was kind of the obvious choice for me to figure out, you know, how, how can I learn more about different technologies that are out there and the skills I need to, to develop them. Um, so it was an obvious choice for me and, you know, I've really enjoyed it ever since. Yeah. So you, you guys just didn't like games and then decided I want to join this course. It was, was much yeah. more fundamental. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So just to put it out there, you know, if you like playing computer games, this isn't what this course <laughs> is about. 
So there's much more foundational, fundamental. I think Des covered that pretty well in, in his talk. So sorry if, if that's what you can play games, but you get to create them as well. That's the point. <laughs> can I interject there too, Enda, and just say that um in, in our extensive experience of you know students over the years, um creative uh, interests also uh, can play a large part in, in, you know, enjoying technology. And this could range, you've mentioned games, but it could also include like music and just, we have a lot of crossover and a lot of staff members are also involved in music. And um, I don't know what else, True. Des, any other Des, kind of- do you play any music? Um, I won't claim to be a musician, but I, I, an interesting thing, my background was actually in electronics and uh, I, I did actually work for a while in, as an electronics engineer. But uh, what I realized is that the thing about computer programming, later on I moved into, I worked for, I was working for a computer, a company that designed and made computer systems. And uh, I kind of retrained as a software engineer um, because there was a lot more demand for software engineers. That's what I found within generally. And I also found it very satisfying because it's what a parent touched on. You can actually, the, the cycle from designing to getting something working is much shorter in software. You can actually, you know, as you debug stuff and get it get it running, there's great satisfaction in that. That's the thing that really hooked me. You know, a lot of the yeah. concepts are very similar around design because to create a, a software application, you still have to use components and you have to use libraries and you have to use, there's a lot of design aspect to it, which the course covers, I think, fairly well in terms of programming and software engineering. So it's not just that you think of a program and it suddenly emerges, you have to actually design it, particularly if you work as part of a team and there's, you know, multiple aspects to it. But the, the really cool thing being a software engineer is that you actually get really, you know, you can get very, it's great satisfaction when something actually comes together, when you actually debug it and it starts to work and you initially, you get a, an alpha version going and a beta version, and then suddenly you have something that's almost product ready and it can be iterated and brought through into the marketplace. So for me, that was yeah. tremendously satisfying when I worked in, in the industry itself, so. Yeah, it's a really good point, Des. Yeah, and I think the guys would all agree with that. Um, and just a question for you, Karen. Uh, look, I hate to bring this up, but you know, we're all aware of the current climate with COVID. Um, how do you see the jobs market going with computing and computer science graduates, considering like that there's a lot of uncertainty out there at the moment? Well, I think, again, thanks, Enda, that Des touched on this very much in his presentation. And uh, I guess, you know, there, it has been a very difficult year uh, for, for everyone mm -hmm. um, and, and nobody knows what the future holds. But what is you know, very obvious is that the role technology has played and is playing and will continue to play is only growing. So, you know, we, we don't have crystal balls in terms of exactly what opportunities are going to emerge, but they are extensive. And, you know, sure. again, Des, you touched on it with the, talking about the Zoom and the conference te technologies, but also in the medical domain and the, the need for technology to support populations um, their health, their public health, and um, we, we see it. We everybody's become, you know, a data scientist in terms of you know the the, the modeling of COVID and the prediction, the analytics. So I, I really, I really think it's just um, vast the the, yeah. the opportunities. And yeah. We still have the traditional ones, and everywhere that you know, again in the presentation was listed as companies. Um, I I just think the opportunities are. Endless, really. It seems to have, yeah, remained a very, very, very robust sector, particularly, um, you know, I know other sectors have been hit very hard, you know, the accommodation sector, and, but yeah. for us, it seems to have been almost a growth opportunity. I'd be interested, guys, um, so both Robert and Aparna, you would have done your internships last year or your placements for eight months. How, were many, were, were either of you offered positions to come back to those companies this year? You were, Aparna? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so I work for Fidelity Investments for my internship, and I did get offered a job, and I will be going back there, which is... Okay, okay. Yeah. So this is this is quite common. This tends to happen. You see, you do an eight-month internship, and they offer you a job, so you go back and you do your final year, and then you go straight into that work, working environment the following year. Actually, in some, in some cases, I know SAP gives scholarships to people, so they pay them to do their final year so that they come back and spend a couple of years with them. So you can actually get money and earn money in your final year in computing. It's not too many undergraduate degrees that allow that. Yeah, so that's, I just, just wanted to highlight that. 
Um, um, and uh, I, I would also say that the other scholarships that, that are available, for instance, we, there's a Women in Technology Scholarship from Intel, mm -hmm. which we have um, students have been awarded. So it's, it's a nationally um, and internationally competitive program. I, I don't know, Aparna, Robert, if you're aware of other um, scholarships and funding that your classmates, etc., have. Yeah, I, I've heard of the Intel one that you're, you're talking about there and um... You know, it's a great program for for those who have applied yeah. for it. A, a few of my friends in the course got it. Um, very, very good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that industry academic link is 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 quite strong throughout. And um, Robert, your your placement was with. My placement was with uh, Jaguar Land Rover, so the care company uh, down in Shannon. Um, I, you know, it was a really great experience. I was there from January to August last year. Um, you know, we got to do the software uh, development. Um, on the vehicles, but also, you know, get to test out the vehicles every now and then. So there's a, a few prototypes available when I was down there to take for a spin or whatever. So it was, it was a great, uh, great experience. So, so Robert, when will these cars be able to drive themselves, do you think? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's what everyone wants to know, I guess, you know, we can get a lift home from the pub or something like that, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully in the near future. Very good. Um, so tell me, guys, is there anything that surprised you about the course? Uh, just this is directed to Aparna and Robert whilst you were doing it. Um, Maybe pleasantly surprised. Don't yeah. say anything negative. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, though. It was a really good course. Like, year one was mainly focused for, at, like, just building the fundamentals for us. But year two onwards it just picked up like they started teaching us so much like this to all sorts of technologies all sorts of languages exploring everything and that was so exciting i really enjoyed like even small things like professional skills like i would have never expected to have to like present and like have to write reports but it was so useful and like like i said for me especially like games programming was very useful towards my final year projects. Literally all the modules you do, they all slowly, slowly build towards like your final year project. And it, it just feels so good when you see it all come together. Small things like so statistics or like even software engineering skills where they teach you things like agile, which is so useful in like our third year when we were actually working. It just felt so familiar. It was really good. Brilliant. How about you, Robert? Yeah, definitely. I have to agree with what, what was said, um, you know, coming into the course, I kind of thought it'd be, you know, heavily programming or whatever, but, you know, you really learn the soft skills as well, um, such as agile, you know, working in a team through different group projects and things like that, that, you know, really stand to you or stood to me for, you know, work placement in third year and now going out into industry after this. Um, so what I'll say is, you know, it was a really, really great course. I really enjoyed it. Um, one thing I will say is that, uh, you know, where's the last four years gone? Time is absolutely flew. And so that's, you know, a good sign. Uh, yeah. Time flies and you're having fun. So. And did you make good friends, guys? Is, is there good fun to be had or is it all work? Is there any fun time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really good. Like the group projects are good because I think like you get to know everyone as well. And then you also get to know, like learn things from each other. And yeah. it would have been much better if we were on campus because we could all work together and discuss things. But yeah. sure, that's what it is. Are there any particular are there any particular lecturers that are mean? <laughs> you don't have to answer that question. It's fine. Uh, everybody should know that Enda teaches these students. Uh, yeah. When do you meet them, Enda? Is it second year? Yes, I teach them, yeah, yeah. yeah. I teach you guys second year and third year online. I used to teach you in first year as well, but I no longer. I've moved to postgrads now, so unfortunately. But Des, you must teach every year, do you? No, second, third, and fourth year. That's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> I've been not third year. I've um, I teach two subjects in third year, which combined make up I think a quarter of the credits. So there's quite a bit in third year actually. So you have to be nice to Des. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're great students. So. <laughs> yeah. Karen, you teach a mix, don't you? You teach undergrad and postgrad. I do. I, I only meet this group for um, one module in third year, a uh, human computer interaction module. But um, yeah, I also teach on the BA stream and a lot of the different postgrad groups. Yeah, very good. So guys, like I suppose, 
the important question is when we graduate from this course, how much money are we going to make? Well, people are probably thinking, like, if I'm choosing to go into medicine or if I'm choosing to go into computer science, how will they compare? So, for instance, what's the general starting salary now, guys? Uh, for, for instance, Fidelity, Aparna, what would they offer you starting out? Do you mind? You don't have to answer. You can give a broad range, but. Uh, they'd offer you around like 35 to 40 at least starting which is like amazing starting off really good a fresh yeah. graduate considering let's say a, a national teacher i think starts on 27 or 28,000 mm -hmm. so like that's an excellent salary to start out with to be honest i think and then after four years yeah after four years yes yeah. so, and the potential to grow i think is is there as well yeah. Like if, if you decided to go to the US i'd imagine your salary would be maybe 150,000 dollars a year you know, so there's great flexibility, there's great travel opportunities, isn't there? I think, Des, you wanted to get in there. Yeah, I mean, the, what happens is that uh, it, it tends to grow quickly as well early in, in your career because you're going to get skills rapidly, you know. So somebody, after five years, if you've been working in interesting projects and technologies, you're going to ramp up your skill level very, very quickly and your, you know, the value of, of, uh, of in terms of, of, of how much you can earn and so on. There are companies in Ireland, particularly in the East Coast around Dublin, a lot of the big cloud companies are in Ireland. We have a massive number of data centers in Ireland. And in fact, this, at this point in time, I was looking at stats, there's a, a hundred new data centers either in planning or planned in Ireland um, at this point in time, on top of what we already have. So all the big cloud computing companies, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and many others, Microsoft, they have huge presence in Ireland. And those companies um, employ a vast number of, of computer science and related graduates. AWS, which is the biggest cloud computing company in the world, have half their engineering team in Dublin. You know, the other half are on the West Coast of America and they work, operate 24 hours that way. And those, those companies pay very, very good um, salaries you know but obviously the cost base is higher in Dublin so you know what's what will you mightn't have to pay as much in other parts of Ireland to have the same value in reality but the pay scales are very good you know and that's true internationally as well so yeah, that's a big point because you've got Google you've got Facebook you've got nearly every tech startup that you've ever heard of probably has an office in Dublin and that yeah. could be for tax reasons but at the same time, an awful lot of them are hiring developers. Yeah, but they also have a lot of they also have a lot of um, you know tangible assets in Ireland. We're not just talking about uh, pay, you know shelf companies. These companies employ vast numbers of of engineering, computer science graduates, and they also have vast operations here, particularly in data center technology. So that there's a huge physical, tangible presence in Ireland as well. So, yeah, no, it's it all sounds great, guys. Um, any any other interesting points anyone would like to raise is there anything that you'd like to share that you found you know it's just particularly interesting or you know i can open up the floor a little bit we've we have a little bit of time no one wants to go forward no well i think that's i think we've covered most things I think I, covered I it, think, Andy, yeah. yeah i think we have yeah it's been a really interesting discussion i want to thank Des for giving the presentation. He's also a lecturer here. Um, so if you decide to come, you'll see lots of him. Karen's been great, instrumental. Does a lot with marketing. She's a very positive, happy person. As you can see, she's always smiling. I want to thank both of our student representatives. We've got Parna Pandey and Robert Walsh. They're both final years, both excellent students who've come through it. We're very happy with them. They gave great answers today. So really appreciate you guys turning up. And if you want more, if you've got other questions or you need more information, there's a live public Q&A going on right now. So just pop your answers there and they'll be answered for you. Or sorry, pop your questions there and they'll be answered for you by a member of our team. And we really appreciate you turning up today and we really hope to see you actually in person next year. So we hope to be back on campus. So please, please do come along and uh, visit us. So thanks everyone. Yeah, just to add in that, please get in touch as well. You can find our contact details on the website and, uh, you know, or through Pubble. But, but, but definitely, if you think of questions later, just email us and we'd be happy to come back, okay? Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Bye-bye. Great. Bye -bye. See you Bye -bye. all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.